Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason, I've been Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And as per usual, in this edition of the podcast, we're going to be talking about some psychological aspects of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now, for the new listeners, viewers out there, I'm going to reiterate that I am a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor. I've been teaching it since February of 2018. I have literally taught hundreds of people all over the earth. And I must also reiterate that only a fraction of those hundreds of people only a very small percentage of them have ever actually gone on to get closure on this grammar and then also had success with it, stopping the trespass of the fiction system. A very small percentage, a handful, not even a dozen, maybe under six. And, the re- and that's why I always say the 1% of the 1% of the 1% are going to learn this. Because most people, for whatever reason, the and my guess is it's just the perhaps the programming that they've been, they've been brought up with, don't have the psychological, neurological pathways to grasp the way this works. Most people perhaps get frightened, which is understandable because some very heinous repercussions can happen if you challenge your quote-unquote master, i.e. the fiction system. If you buck the system, it's going to be bumpy. I can't say that it's always going to be bumpy for everyone, but I can say for most people that buck the system, it gets bumpy, it has some discomfort associated with it, perhaps even painful. Some people have been put in jail. Some people, you know, it's just have been physically assaulted. It comes with the territory if you want to become your own authority and truly become your own authority and be autonomous so that you can navigate alongside this system rather than be beholden to it. You can do this. It is possible. It just takes a lot of intestinal fortitude and a lot of gumption to do that. And some people can't even get past the idea that you don't have to submit to the system's authority. Case in point, I had a former student who just happens to be a channel member on my YouTube channel Uh, invest the energy in typing out a very long comment conveying and articulating his issues with correct sentence structure, how it doesn't make sense to him that an etymology dictionary um, would be used uh, for facts. This is the way he put it, to paraphrase. And that who's to say that a word had this or that meaning 700 years ago. How can you prove that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay? And this is the issue that he's had, I think, from since the beginning, since I began teaching him years ago when he first applied for workshops. It seems as though he already has his mind made up about the way things are. He doesn't have... He doesn't appear to possess a solid base of what a fact is for him. Like, what constitutes a fact for him? What would be the checklist that would be a fact for him? Uh, I remember one time we got into it, and I've mentioned this before in another podcast, where we got into a conversation about, I use an example of someone walking down the street with a red shirt. And he said, well, how do you know it's red? I said, well, I can grab someone off the street 
maybe two people, maybe three people, and ask them, hey, what color is that shirt? And they would probably all say red. And he said, well, what if you have a blind person then? Like, th this is his mentality. He, like, always takes it one step further into what I consider to be ridiculousness. Like, why would you do that? Things are very, very simple. There is a common base of the way that we perceive things and we come together with common perceptions of a thing. You either agree with someone or you don't. If I'm standing there with 10 people and there's a guy with a red shirt and I ask all 10 people, is that shirt red? And they all say yes. And then this, this former student of mine would turn and say, well, what if there's a blind person here? Well, wouldn't the blind person then trust the word of the 10 other people that say the shirt is red? And how important is that anyways, the color of a shirt? I think we got into another conversation about the moon. He's like, well, how do I know the moon's a fact? Like, how, how would you certify that? And I said, well, we can both stand out in the backyard and look at it. It's round sometimes. It changes shape. Well, okay. How, what would be a better way to articulate that? The shape or appearance, the appearance of the moon changes from day, from night to night. But it does, it is consistent. It comes, we see it in the sky at different positions, but it's pretty consistent except for maybe one night when, and this is excluding clouds and things like that, one night when they call it a new moon, and there is no moon, it's not visible, because there's no light coming from it. Now, whether that light is reflected or self-induced, uh, I can't say for sure. I don't know. But what I can't, what I do know is we can go out in my backyard on the night of a full moon, I can point up and say that is what 99.9% .9 of the people on, on Earth would call a moon. It's round, it's bright, it's luminescent, and it follows a consistent uh, position in the sky clock on a very consistent basis, and it seems to be related to uh, some other things, but as far as to whatever else it is, I don't know. So that's what the moon would be for me as a fact. It is a fact. I can see it. I sense it. So you have to have a basis for these things. And this, for whatever reason, this individual does not have that. And then he shared in his comment that he has been successful with fiction affidavits. Which, that's awesome. Whatever works. I'm a big fan of whatever works. Whatever trouble has come his way through the fiction system, he's been able to deal with it using fiction tactics. And that is indeed awesome. I congratulated him on his success. But then he went on to basically say that we should do an experiment where I would. he wanted me to file in an affidavit using correct sentence structure and, and he would file in an affidavit using whatever he uses and see what's successful. Now, this makes absolutely no sense to me from even a logical perspective because an affidavit is no contract. It's a vowel in front of a consonant, first of all. I would never do such a thing based on that and also based on the fact that it's a fiction performance. Why would I ever submit to a fiction court if I am my own authority. If he's sending an affidavit to a court, he's submitting to their authority. He wants a judge to make some sort of ruling on whatever he's submitting. So he is putting himself, he is subordinating himself to that system, to someone else's authority, basically telling them that he's not the authority, they are, and he's throwing themselves at their mercy. And then this time they just so happened to say, yeah, okay, you're good. And then he was successful with it. Good for him. 
That's not how correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar works, folks. And I would say most of my regular viewers would probably know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. That you are your own authority and you would never submit to a fiction court. Now you can walk into those locations, but you have to know how to do that. With your sea pass sea treaty, with your position of peace and neutrality by posting your roads and having all your documents in place with correct grammar. Your live life claim, your favorite volition claim if you have one, sea pass sea treaty, and also your document contract postal vessel court venue, whatever that may be for that particular case. That's another thing, you know, he suggested we do an experiment. <clears throat> but the only reason I would ever use correct sentence structure in such a manner, the only reason I would ever travel physically to a foreign vessel in dry dock as a peaceful and neutral contract party on equal footing, void of all boxes and planes and things like that, is if there was a trespass happening. And ever since I started doing correct sentence structure and I've done cases through my postal courts, I have not been trespassed upon. The trespass stopped because I used correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax, grammar. The trespassing has stopped. I haven't got any cases personally. You know, they, they don't, they have not messed with me for whatever reason. They just don't. I mean, I'm not normally a lawbreaker anyways, a fiction lawbreaker, whatever that is. I navigate with the do no harm thing uh, mentality. I'm not out to cause problems and I'm certainly not looking for problems. And that's another thing, you know, from my own personal perception. There are people out there who look for problems. They just can't leave well enough alone. They think that the world should navigate according to their morals and values. That if people aren't doing the things the way that they think they should be doing things, then people must be forced to do things the way that they feel. Which, again, is rooted in fiction psychology. Fiction psychology is thinking that you can force another human being to do what you want them to do. If they don't agree with you, then they're wrong. They're not correct and they need to stop and correct. Um, and you're going to force them to do that. That's fiction system mentality. That's what the fiction system does. The fiction system puts mandates out. Puts commands out. It's an authoritarian, uh, sorry, authoritarian construct. And again, I feel like this is what the this guy's uh, root problem is: is the psychology. He just, for some reason, cannot get away from. He he lacks capacity to get away from that authoritarian structure. Or maybe he really doesn't want to. Maybe that's comfortable for him to be in that sort of construct. Like I remember when uh, David Wynn Miller and even Russell J. Gould would talk about how they got judges, fiction judges, to come down off the bench, take their robe off, and share with them the secrets of judge mechanics. The secrets of judge mechanics. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? These are the words that they use. Secrets of judge mechanics. If there's a secret, then there is no geometric level playing field. So the system, the fiction system, if it possesses secrets, that is not a geometric level playing field. That is a crooked-ass construct tipped in the favor of the people who hold the secrets. And if you, as a normal individual, walk into those venues, you're being ambushed. It's not fair. What correct sentence structure does is it creates the fairness. It creates the rule one, rule equal. 
And that's the power of it. There is no disadvantage. There are no secrets or tricks. It is what it is. But the fiction system is certainly not going to participate with something like that. Because they want the balance to be tipped because it's how they make their money. It's how they keep their wealth, how they maintain their lifestyles. Through fleecing (laughs) the quote-unquote defendants and plaintiffs that come through their venues. And it is their venue, folks. It is their venue. Make no mistake. If I mail myself into a foreign vessel and dry dock, I'm well aware that it is their venue. However, and this is the huge difference between me and this other individual, my document contract postal vessel court venue is the authoritative vessel in that well of the court if I decide to step in there, if I mail myself in there. That is the authority. Because I am the authority of me, not them, me. I'm not taking authority over them, but I'm taking jurisdiction over the well of the court because the 1 by 1.9 flag is the flag of the land during the time of the contract. It establishes a geometric level playing field, voids the boxes and planes. And everyone is invited to come into that geometric level playing field. Of course... (laughs) 9.9 9.9 times out of 10, they are not going to accept that invitation. They're not going to come onto the geometric level playing field. They're going to do everything they can to get me out of there. Or they're just going to dismiss it, not deal with it, leave the room, call another case, ignore me. That's what they're going to do. At least that's my experience with what has happened uh, with not only myself, but with Other individuals that, again, small handful of individuals that I've taught that have actually done those things, gone into those foreign vessels and dry dock. They've had cases thrown out, dismissed, erased from the record. There is no record of them ever coming in there, ever speaking. It's not on any website. It's just gone. That's the power of correct sentence structure. They didn't file or submit a no contract affidavit and throw themselves at the mercy of the court with their pleadings and whinings or whatever you want to call them. No. They took authority over themselves and they stood up and some of them paid a hefty price for it. But to them, the price was worth it because now they don't get messed with by the system anymore. They coexist peacefully alongside the system. And that, in a nutshell, separates them from this former student of mine. Just can't... Hmm. Well, I don't want to say that because I don't want to assume for him. My guess would be the neurological pathways just are not there. They never have been at this point in the now space because they don't really have certification as to what a fact is. And if they do, then they don't apply it probably to everything across the board. As I've said in the past, make a checklist, folks, of what constitutes a fact for you and then apply it to every concept that you encounter or think of. Apply it to a tree, a house, the moon, a red shirt, a god, a flower, a man, a woman, a child, a worm, a piece of paper, the word the. Apply that list. Tick all those boxes. If, if these objects or however you concepts tick all the boxes, then they're a fact. If they don't, then they're not. At some point, you have to establish a baseline. And unfortunately, I don't think this individual has a baseline established. And that's why there's sort of like a pinball ping shot around a pinball game by flippers. 
They just don't have that solidity to their psychology so that correct sentence structure, uh, sorry, correct sentence structure can take root and start a solid foundation, a solid center. Now, this individual is a very nice individual. He's very friendly. He's very peaceful, as far as I can see. He's magnanimous. I'm not speaking bad about. I'm, I'm not speaking bad about the guy at all. What I'm doing is addressing what his comment was on my YouTube channel, and also using it as a springboard to share more of this correct sentence structure psychology with you, the viewer. Because maybe you also fall into this category. You, you also have these problems with certifying things. Because at the end of the day, I am the authority of my construct. I am the authority of my dictionary, which governs my construct. If you do not agree with my method of certifying facts, if you do not, if you do not agree with the value that I have invested in my facts, if I banked into my facts, that's okay. You and I are not going to be contracting. And that's exactly what happened with myself and this former student. There was not no longer a joinder or an agreement there, a concordance there, so I broke bulk. And that's just the way it happens sometimes. I'm okay with people not agreeing with me. I don't even have to like you to contract with me as long as you comply with the terms and conditions that I set out. Once you stop complying with that, then we are no longer contracting. And that's cool. It's not a popularity contest. My mission is to teach this grammar to those that want to learn it. If you want to learn it, this is one possible place for you to learn it via the over 800 videos on my channel or via confidential workshops. And I don't know if this former student has a channel or how many videos they have or how much in the public stuff or speaking or teaching that they've done. But I can tell you that in the comment that I left for him, I did say, if you want to, I'd be willing to put on a live stream on my channel where you show your face and use your correct name and you come up with me on the geometric level playing field and you use your, you, you give your side of the story with your fiction babble grammar and I in turn will give Kuliana using correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar knowledge. But you have to come up out of the darkness into the light and show yourself. And we'll see exactly what kind of position you have. Because I'm more than willing to take the Pepsi challenge. Especially when it comes to adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Because folks, I have basically over six years of experience using this grammar. And there isn't too much that I haven't seen. And I know that this individual has zero experience using the grammar. So that's why I don't think that they will accept my offer. But it's possible they might. And so I look forward to that if they do. But I don't mean any of this in any mean-spirited sort of way. As my wife likes to say, I'm... She, she likes to say that I'm very competitive. I think I used to be. I try not to be. But I guess it does come out sometimes. I can be competitive. So I guess that's where the Pepsi challenge <laughs> statement comes from. So it should be fun if it actually happens. But I sincerely doubt that it will. Um, from my experience of his comments on my YouTube channel... He'll like come out of the woodwork every once in a while and leave a comment and then I'll give Kuliana to it. But then he never responds. He'll like disappear for another couple months 
And then all of a sudden, something maybe drew his attention to my channel, and then he decides to comment again, and then he disappears again. That's pretty much the uh, extent of his participation. It's very inconsistent. So, we'll see. Thank everybody for listening to my podcast, listening to all my stuff. I hope it's been helpful to you in the psychological domain that I speak of, which I don't think anyone else covers the psychology of this stuff in the depth that I do. So, cool. I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.